There's this general philosophy underpinning a lot of science education and communications saying that the best way to dispel ignorance and show people how the world truly is, is to simply just present them with the evidence and when confronted with it, they'll change their views accordingly. The reason that this is so popular is because by and large it tends to work. People are rather receptive to new ideas and new perspectives or either new ways of thinking about things that they have already seen before. People are rather interested in how the world works and if you provide them with that information, they tend to accept it pretty readily. But there's a reason why I say by and large and throw in the caveat that people tend to. Because there's also a class of things that people can get new information about and they just reject that information right off the bat. This is a really well understood psychological phenomenon known as the backfire effect. And it works because there are some bits of information and perceptions of the outside world, whether they be factually correct or actually disproven, that people tend to incorporate into their core identities. They build up their worldviews upon these foundations. Now, a number of you may be thinking, Peter, I already know about the backfire effect. I already know how difficult it can be to try to convince someone of a truth that they so ardently reject. It's a Sisyphean task, right? You're pushing that boulder up the hill just to watch it fall down again and again. And I understand that a lot of you guys probably do know about the backfire effect, but I have a little secret about the backfire effect that isn't really as well known. It's not as bad as it seems. As you probably guessed by now, I'm not actually going to be discussing the backfire effect itself because that's not what's concerning to me. What's concerning is that there is a lot of interest surrounding the backfire effect recently and that this interest is causing people to believe erroneous things. Ironically, information about the backfire effect is causing people to believe falsehoods and those falsehoods surround the ability of people to be able to persuade others. In this video, I'm honestly hoping that my discussion of the backfire effect does not induce the backfire effect about the backfire effect and thus backfire back upon me. Uh, <laughs> try saying that ten times fast. It took a few takes, I'll tell you. Most of the current interest in the backfire effect can be directly traced to a comic produced by Matthew Inman, aka The Oatmeal, titled, You Are Not Going to Believe What I'm About to Tell You. I'm not just saying that speculatively. The comic was uploaded initially on May 2nd. You can see by the Google Trends data that interest of the backfire effect just skyrocketed around that point. So if you've been seeing a lot of your friends on Facebook talking about the backfire effect as if they're seasoned and trained psychologists, it's probably because they've read the comic. And I just want to emphasize right here and now that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think it's fantastic that we have a number of different ways on the internet that people can learn new things, such as, you know, the comments by the oatmeal or by blog posts or by YouTube videos. And I have to tell you, as somebody who studies political psychology and the numerous ways that partisanship impacts our cognitions, that I found this to be absolutely awesome. I first read it for the first time and I just wanted to blow it up and put it in a poster and put it in my office somewhere. So again, I want to emphasize that there's nothing wrong with the comic itself. In fact, it's a wonderful first step into understanding the backfire effect and all of its many nuances. But that's the thing. It's a first step. And a lot of people are taking this information and then kind of coming back with a really pessimistic view upon life and in terms of the ability to be able to persuade others of things that are objectively true. They take the backfire effect to mean that there's no way we can actually convince anybody of anything. It has to come from within themselves. In fact, I've already seen commenters on the internet disengage from otherwise fruitful debates or discourage others from even engaging them in the first place because they believe that any conversation between dissimilar individuals is just ultimately going to be fruitless. There's a certain amount of truth to that claim. Most of the literature on persuasion argues that it's not the people who firmly believe X or who firmly believe Y who are apt to change their minds. Rather, it's the individuals who exist on the continuum between the two extremes. This point was excellently explored in Veritasium's video on Bayes' theorem, and the core point is that it's the individuals who are more moderate, who are more willing to change and shift their positions. So with this in mind, it makes sense to claim that it's those who are entrenched at the polls, who are not only unwilling to hear disconfirming evidence, but once they receive it, to become even more entrenched in their original belief structure. Now there's a reason why the general preponderance of evidence argues this main point, and that is because it's the general truth when it comes to those issues that have significant moral foundations. You're never going to hear me argue that people's perceptions aren't biased or that the ways that we think about the world aren't somehow colored by our identity and the things that constitute that identity. That's not true at all, and to argue otherwise would just be fallacious. But what I'm saying instead is that it's really not as strong or as bad as the backfire effect may lead you to believe. 
It's one thing this conception holds that people who are placed at the polls are incapable of changing their minds or being persuaded, and this simply isn't true. Take, for instance, the daughter of the head of the Westboro Baptist Church, who grew up believing that homosexual acts were detestable and that homosexuals themselves were, you know, damnable and just subhuman. However, she became exposed to gay individuals and came to realize that they were really no different than the rest of us. This was a gradual transformation, but a profound one nonetheless. Or take, for instance, a study demonstrating that having a transgendered individual go door to door and discuss LGBT rights in a non-confrontational, non-judgmental fashion was able to reduce prejudice and increase sympathy for their cause. But importantly, they were even able to move those who were strongly against the concept initially. There's also a second problem with this belief, and that's the idea that people will just reject information that doesn't cohere with theirs so that they don't even acknowledge or understand the actual truth of the matter. Because studies show that people really do know the arguments against their position, they just reject them. This phenomenon is observed readily, although not exclusively, with conservatives and climate change. If you were to ask a typical American conservative whether or not they believed in climate change, they are not particularly likely to say yes compared to an American liberal, especially if they are less scientifically literate. But unlike the typical liberal, who become more likely to agree with climate change the more scientifically literate they get, conservatives are actually less likely to agree with the notion with the more they understand about the science. This may be hard to believe, but it's actually a good thing that people are rejecting information once they've come to acknowledge it and understand it, then they're just doing it out of hand. In fact, research finds that the ability to acknowledge why experts believe something despite not being predisposed to it oneself can be a formative step towards eventually coming to that belief as well. The backfire effect, as well as the endeavor of persuasion more generally, is all about how you frame things, how you present information, and how you engage in the discussion. If you go into a topic looking to get someone riled up and mad through the presentation of systematic facts, then you shouldn't really be surprised that no one's going to want to listen to you. But if you engage in the discussion in a way that gets them to migrate away from that poll, then gradually they might find themselves more amenable to persuasion down the road. It has to be a gradual process. Because it is possible to change people's minds. We just have to do so patiently, earnestly, and respectfully. What do you guys think about the backfire effect and about the psychology of persuasion more generally? Because again, it's not that the backfire effect isn't a thing or that there aren't challenges ahead, it's just that it's not as daunting or as impossible as some of the more naive and pessimistic uh, perceptions of these concepts would have it. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are about this or about anything else uh, down in the comments section. I'm looking forward to reading all of them and answering a few from the next office hours. Links for everything as always will be down in the doobly-doo as well as for the link for the Facebook, the Twitter, and the blog. And if this is the first time you guys are hearing about this, yes, we have a Facebook, Twitter, and a blog. I look forward to seeing you guys out there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, I hope you'll consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and maybe clicking the bell to get notified when more content is uploaded. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.